Oh, that scratch shit's making me shit. Well, look at shit, it's making me shit. Too, I guarantee it. <laughs> if y'all really like the shit, the fucking shit, <laughs> the king of the shit's gonna rock the shit. <laughs> Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing a little dot box demonstration for a pendant just like this one. We'll have a close up uh, at the end of the video. I'm shooting this today with a GoPro and I have a voiceover and try to detail as much of the process as I can. Alright, let's get into it. Like with every good work sesh, we're going to start with a sip of coffee, get this blast shield out of the way, and flame on. So I'm going to be working with a tube of one inch heavy wall, and my white that I'm using is going to be China White. I really like China White. Once it gets hot, it's nice and smooth, will boil a little easier than others. So I think China White holds up really well for these kind of uh, pendants. So the first dot's the easiest, you can lay it anywhere you want. After that, you really want to pay attention to laying your dots in an even line across your tube so that you don't end up with like a wobbly or off-axis um, first ring for your dot stack. This is basically going to be the foundation for all your future dots, so the first row is, is really the most important. After you lay your first ones down, I'm going to be careful heating up the white, just uh, even though I think this one's a good white to use. To use, um, I want to heat it up a little gently so I don't overheat the surface before it has a base temperature and starts melting in. So I'm going to sink a little bit more heat into it. I see it's all starting to get happy and molten and just heating it up and giving it little puffs so that the dots melt into the tube. I can also start pre-shaping my uh, the back of my pendant at this point to really gauge the diameter of the disc that I'm going to have at the end. That's something I keep in mind when I'm puffing out that first part. So now I'm going to be laying amber purple dots on top of that in this video. At the end we're going to have a close up of a green stardust one. I didn't get a close up of this one before it sold so um, I have made a few since then. So you can go a little bit faster laying the amber purple dots because you already have your, your row established and it's easy to tell where you're placing them. Um, you just want to focus on leaving enough even space of white and not covering up too much of those first dots so that you have a good ring around your color dot. I usually try to leave at least a millimeter of space. So I'm going to go in again, sink some heat into this, puff it out a few times, make sure those amber purple dots are nice and melted in before I start my second row. I think my camera died before I had done the second row of white dots. So here you're seeing me lay the amber purple dots on top of the, the second row of white dots. Again, this is way easier than that first row because everything's already established. Um, the only thing I would really pay a set of dots on the second row that you place them a little less than halfway up your first row of dots. You don't want to cover up too much of those first dots. You don't want to cover up too little either. I guess what I see is the, the tip of my second dots should end up about halfway into the first set of dots. So again, I'm just going to sink some heat into this some more, melt that second row in, and then I'm going to start on my third row. 
Usually I do these in at least four rows. Um, three rows you can get away with, but it just doesn't seem like enough to me. I like to have uh, a couple more layers at least. For these pendants, I usually do four. All right, tearing a little bit of glass off at the end there. Um, when you're preheating and puffing and melting those dots in, you can gather a lot of glass at the end, so it helps a little bit to just remove some prematurely before you're, you're actually doing your termination. Just helps me, um, you know, to have less weight at the end of the day. So here I'm laying that third row. You can kind of see where it's about at the middle of those second row of dots. Again, maintaining an even spacing and just trying to keep them all even around the tube so it's not off axis. there's a little extra glass there like I, I put a little too much white glass there on a few of those dots you can go ahead and just tweeze that extra glass off um, you don't need huge dots it just needs to cover that surface area especially on the white ones the color ones it's nice to get a little generous with the color because it gets a little deeper and darkens the color as opposed to the outer edges of the dots the centers get like a little bit darker and you have kind of a fade effect to certain colors fun to play with. Alright, just melting in those white dots until they look good to me. Give it a little puff and I'm ready to add my next row of amber purple dots. I know it's a little hard to see, with the GoPro it kind of overexposes. Um, with the light coming off of the torch and the glass. But I am experimenting a little bit. I think uh, with my other camera, I, I could do a few mixed shots where I, I take some takes with my Canon and then take some takes with the GoPro. I'm still learning, still playing with different ways to, to edit and put together these videos. But thank you for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being an early subscriber if you are already. Anyway, getting back into these dots, just making sure I leave enough white space to have a good ring around my amber purple and being consistent all the way around the tube. The further down the rows it gets, it seems a little bit easier. Um, just because you have everything, you know, already in place, it's easier to spot where your dots are going to go. Amber purple is a really great color to use for these too. Over white, it's uh, just like that serendipity tubing. It strikes really well. You can hit the surface with the torch afterwards to kind of get certain strikes and, and different effects out of it. But all by itself, is amber purple is just such a beautiful color. That's why it's many glass blow favorites. Alright, so now I'm working a little bit more on removing some glass at the tip there. It, slowly rotating the rod in my right hand as I touch the center of the pendant. It'll draw all the dots towards the center. You really want to, when you're cleaning up a termination on one of these, you really want to make sure you have enough glass hot that you're pulling the dots towards the center and not just removing glass from the center or else you're not going to get the, the same kind of visual effect that you want, kind of like flower petals pulling in 
from the middle of the pendant. And as I condense this and tighten up all the dot work, I'm gonna keep removing glass at the termination just to make sure it's crispy, comes to a nice point in the center. I'm really establishing the shape of the pendant now. I must have missed a row of dots on my camera. I know the, the GoPro camera doesn't last very long for me. It's an older one, I know I need an upgrade, but. Just condensing all that glass down, turning the tube essentially into a solid piece of glass at the end, where all the dots are condensed. Now you can start to see the pattern right there as it cools down. Everything's tightening up and really looking good. And I can run to the kiln and grab an opal that I already had prepped and encased. This will be a great center point for everything, right in the middle of the termination. Have a nice flashy opal that'll catch a lot of sunlight. Opals are something that everybody loves to look at. When I have customers at my uh, vending booths and stuff, they're always drawn into the opals. It's a good touch for almost any piece. Now I saved the time of, you know, punting up from one side to the other and adding the bale. Um, and just jump right into the close up here. This is what you end up with. Your finished dot stack should have layers to it, looking very three-dimensional, like you can almost go under each petal and um, you know, really see the depth of your design. You can see how well the opal refract, refracts, all that light, refracts all that light and gives you all those beautiful colors. This one's in green stardust and really came out well. Like These are some of the, you know, my favorite pendants to, to keep in stock all year round. There's all kinds of stuff you could do with these and the layers. Uh, a lot of people sleeve multiple layers of these in tubing to make marbles that have like a lot of different dimensions to them. Um, yeah, it's just a really fun technique, really cool, all from the simplicity of just laying dots on top of each other. Alright, thanks everybody, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'm still learning and growing. I would really appreciate the support if you wanted to follow me on Instagram. It's at Losco underscore glass. And subscribe to this channel for all my future content. I'm only going to get better. I'm working on it every time. And thank you so much.